Hey everyone, I am Such A Voice Technique Coach Rosemary Chase. I created these sound deafening panels and today I thought it might be fun to share them with you. So follow me and I'll show you the steps. My goal is to move to a new apartment in a different neighborhood of Manhattan. So while I'm waiting for a new place, I've been upcycling and refinishing some of my furniture. The idea was to keep what I love if it had good bones, so to speak. Then I took a look at my home studio area and thought, this is not worthy of my new luxury doorman building, which whether I move into one of those or not is really not the point. I use it as my barometer and I felt it also didn't reflect my taste at all. And as a former designer, I could do better. Living smack dab in the Times Square area of New York City, sometimes I have to go to the SAG-AFTRA EIF voiceover lab to record my auditions. There are often loud noises in my neighborhood, such as commercial ventilation systems on the rooftops of neighboring buildings, and sirens go off frequently too. The booth at SAG has these snazzy bifold panels, which cost them $475 a piece. I also like how they look, and keeping my new apartment in my sights, I use these panels as inspiration to create my own with the soundproofing materials I had already owned, acoustic foam sheets from B&H, which are the egg wave style, two inches thick, and the sheets are 48 inches by 24 inches. I remember paying about $48 at the time and the box came with two sheets. I also had heavy duty felted moving blankets I bought from Home Depot. The first thing I needed to do was create the wood frames. I decided on one inch by three inch posts. I would need eight posts for two sets of bifold panels. Home Depot offers six foot high posts, which was the height I wanted, but I figured out that by purchasing eight foot posts at a lumber company, it would be cheaper because I'd have 24 inches left over from each post to create the 12 inch crossbars I would need for each of the four panels. Plus, unlike the Home Depot in Manhattan, the lumber company offered to make the cuts for me at a dollar a cut. This made the width 14 inches. Panel number one became my testing panel, working out the best way to make the frames. I discovered drilling a small hole all the way through the one inch thick post made it easier to drill the screws in through and into the crossbars. Also, by attaching the center crossbar first, it made it easier to then attach the top and bottom crossbars. I used an L-shaped ruler to make sure my structure was square at every attachment. I also used a dab of glue knowing once it dried, it would just be an additional adhesion. I used any screws I could find in my toolbox, as long as they weren't too thick and they were long enough, and in this case, it would have to be at least an inch and a half. It didn't matter to me if they were all the same screws because they would eventually be covered. After the frames were completed, I wanted to utilize my moving blankets, as I mentioned earlier. I purchased these a while back, and although Home Depot still carries moving blankets, I don't see exactly what I purchased online now. Same with the acoustic foam, but you can find your own version of these materials easily by doing an online search. I was lucky because the size was large enough for me to cut them evenly into four 14 inch by six foot pieces. At first, I started to staple gun them to the frame, but quickly realized it was easier for me to use a glue gun. The glue was placed on all the wood surfaces. I'd work one side at a time in small sections to keep everything nice and taut. Again, because the frames would eventually be upholstered, these blanket pieces just needed to be held in place. Once they were all glued on, this now became the back of each frame. Next was to divide my acoustic foam. For my purposes, I wanted to use what I already had to fill the sections of the frames. Now it was time to decide what to use for the upholstery. Although there are many sound deadening fabrics on the market and they can get pretty pricey, I was familiar working with heavy duty felt and find it easy to work with. Felt is dense and the best part, it doesn't ravel when you cut it. I believe the width was 62 inches. I purchased four yards from a fabric store in New York City's garment district and paid $43.50. I selected a dark gray color, but they had many fun colors to choose from. And if you went this route, maybe you'd prefer hot pink. 
purple, orange, or aqua blue. I think it's perfectly swell to let your studio reflect your personality. To upholster these frames, I also worked in sections. I started by gluing the cross bars first, gluing and stretching the felt as I went along, moving away from each cross bar towards other wood surfaces of the frame, all along keeping it smooth and taut. I worked on the back side first, rotating over to the front side, and when I finished the side of the very last post, I used the staple gun for additional support. The final touches were to purchase one yard of two-inch wide Velcro, which cost $7. I cut them in three-inch lengths. These were to be used for hinges, which I wanted to use instead of metal so I could take apart the bifolds easily, move them around in different positions, use them individually, and make it easy for my moving day. I have used these panels not only for voiceover purposes, but also as a backdrop for any selfies casting directors request from me. Lastly, I added little feet so the felt along the bottom frame would stay clean and make it easier to move the panels around. These get hammered into the wood like nails. They cost $4.56. And here is how they turned out. I hope that you enjoyed this segment of Working Wednesday. I really enjoyed putting these bifold panels together. I like how they look and they really work well. So just remember that in your home studio, you can be as creative in front of the mic as behind. So thanks for watching and bye for now.